weasels, this is mumps, and this is chicken pox. The most likely of these three diseases that people in this room have probably encountered would be chicken pox. I remember when I was little, I felt like all of my friends got chicken pox. And there was a point where I was almost jealous that I did not get chicken pox. I felt like I was left out of some elite group of chicken pox kids that got to stay home from school. There was even an episode of Rugrats where Chucky got chicken pox and he had to spend the entire episode covered in calamine lotion with oven mitts taped to his hands so that he wouldn't be scratching all the time. Now the reason that I didn't get chicken pox unbeknownst to me was because I was vaccinated. The reason that so many kids my age got chicken pox was because um, chicken pox vaccinated, vaccination wasn't recommended for regular use until about 1995. So it was kind of the brink age where doctors weren't telling everyone to get the vaccination yet. These days, vaccination rates are very high in the United States. They're close to 95% for kindergarten age students. Unfortunately, there's a growing, there are growing pockets of people who are not vaccinating their children. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about measles. Um, so, about like 50 years ago, measles used to affect almost everyone before they turned to age 15. And there would be about 500 deaths a year from measles. Then they came out with the vaccination, which helped a lot. But from 1989 to 1991, there were about 55,000 cases reported of measles. And this happened because kids who were uninsured weren't able to get the vaccination, and so then they were, so then they would get measles. Um, after that happened, then the United States allowed uninsured children to receive the vaccination just for the overall health of our country. So since then, there were about 60 cases of measles a year because there's always some people that aren't vaccinated still. Until about 2010, when there was an uprise to about 160 cases a year. And that seems like a lot more. Um, but probably the most startling thing was the Center for Disease Control and Prevention came out with a press release on May 29th, 2014, so just a couple of weeks ago, that there are already 288 confirmed cases of measles in the United States. Nineteen of those cases were in New York City, by the way, so this isn't happening far away. It's very close to us. So the rates of vaccination are good for now. Um, but the problem is that more people are trying to seek exemption from these vaccines. And you, in about 20 states, you're allowed to say that you don't want to vaccinate your kids because of philosophical or religious reasons. So, and there has been some controversy regarding the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, and autism. Um, there was kind of uh, a study that was done improperly that showed a link between autism and the MMR vaccine, which has since been like recanted, and but the information and rumor is still out there, so people still believe it. But the American Academy of Pediatrics says that although the possible association with measles, mumps, rubella vaccine has received much public and political attention, there are many who have derived their own conclusions based on personal experience. And there are many who have derived their own conclusions based on personal experiences. The available evidence does not support the hypothesis that MMR vaccine causes autism or associated disorders. So basically, studies have been done since then, proving that there is really no association between those two things. Preventable diseases like measles seem to, becoming, seem to be becoming more prevalent, and they're much more easily spread through non-vaccinated people. Vaccines help protect you, and they also help protect, protect the people around you. CDC states that in 1921, over 15,000 Americans died of a disease called, called diphtheria, which is an upper respiratory illness. I've never heard of this before, and I'm assuming a lot of people here haven't either, 
which makes sense because since 2004, there's only been one reported case of this disease, thanks to vaccines. Having a heavily vaccinated area can help protect the people around you. This is um, a graphic that I got from the CDC website. So, this person is not vaccinated, and these people are, are and is sick. These people, the blue people are healthy and not vaccinated, and the yellow people are vaccinated. But if the red person is around a bunch of people who are not vaccinated, then they can easily spread the disease. So all the blue people turn around. Whereas if all of these people are vaccinated, and then they come in contact with the red person, they're able to contain the disease and not spread it to other people who aren't vaccinated. This is important because some, disease, some vaccinations are not completely effective. So the measles vaccination, um, it's effective for 99% of people. So you need to get generally two shots for the measles vaccine. You get one dose and then you get a second dose. And out of 100 people, 99 people will become immune to measles from that. But one person will not. So it's important that those 99 people are immune to it because then they can help protect the few people that don't gain the immunity from the vaccine. Areas with the highest vaccination rates do not tend to get outbreaks. People, the unfortunate thing is that people tend to live near pe other people with similar values as them. So that leads to outbreaks in small areas where many people who do not believe in vaccinating their children live together. Jason McDonald, who is a spokesperson for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, says that if you are unvaccinated and you come into contact with measles, there's a 90% chance that you'll get it. So if you have a bunch of people who are unvaccinated living in one area, and somebody goes and travels to another country where measles is more prevalent and comes back, they can easily spread it to everyone around them. Christine Vara of a website called Shot Prevention explains that those who choose not to vac vaccinate often cluster together. And she goes on to explain a story where um, in Texas, somebody was part of a church group, and he went away on like a church mission. He contracted measles, and he came back. And the pastor had told the people at his uh, congregation not to vaccinate. And he then spread measles to basically his entire con congregation. There are many areas in the world where preventable, preventable diseases still exist. Imagine a place like Africa, where children are still plagued and crippled by polio. And around the world, in 2011, there were 350,000 cases of measles in other countries. We eradicated smallpox from the entire planet, and that was in great part due to the vaccine. Vaccines work. Places around the world without access to, va to vaccines are still plagued by these diseases. This is why I urge you to remain informed and educated about vaccines and to vaccinate your children when the time comes. Luckily, when we were little, we usually only had to deal with chicken pox, which was pretty manageable for most people. But the CDC states that the vaccination rate rates dropped to low levels nationally. Diseases could become as common as they were before vaccines. So I urge you to please vaccinate your children. 